Hey, whenever you're done with that porn collection, let me go ahead and hold that. And I'm married to you on this situation. We got a special treat coming up for you. Oh, this guy's awesome, right? Yeah, this, this guy's got more love to us than anyone. We met about two years ago when we got started. So where we end up? South Carolina? He's strange, he's obscure, and he's one of our best friends in comedy. From Bluffton, South Carolina, all the way to the depths of hell. Scott! Put your hands together for Scott Cork. King Sport, Scott Cork. Yeah, what a great audience. Oh, man, I don't even get these pretty for girls in my audience. Mine are usually more like Island like Dr. Moreau. Oh, it's like Dave said, it's like, oh man, you gotta come here and play and play this set, but you gotta do a clean set. And you know, I do a lot of stuff, you know. I'm a painter, it's one of my paintings right there. I'm an architect, I'm a sculptor, and all a filmmaker, and all of we have a different professional language. And I was used to clean set in the filmmaking tradition. Like, when you finish making your film, if your actress is all stiff and leaky, you clean the hotel room before you leave. Clean set. Dave, do you have a leaky girlfriend? I'll help you clean that set. <laughs> Evidently, it means something different in comedy. Dave explained it to me, he said, Scott, that's when you take all of your material and just remove the funny parts. <laughs> So uh, he said, all right, well, we're doing the just Jewish uh, charity. So, you know, uh, against, uh, against human trafficking. Against, right? Against human trafficking. And uh, so, so, so no Hitler. All right, no Hitler tonight. Put the Hitler away. Uh, and, like, don't use your favorite word. Four-letter word starts with C, ends with T. Means woman. Don't, I'm not going to use that. No, I'm not using that word. And uh, my mom's going to be in the audience, so none of your crazy, improbable, likely physically impossible sexual stories and poems. No problem. So I looked at what I had left to do, what I had left to do, and it wasn't nothing left on my list. I had one piece left. Um, not necessarily a piece of stand-up comedy. It's a bedtime story I wrote for my nieces and nephews. But it kills. It kills. It puts them to sleep. So, so if you feel a little nappy, just put your heads down. Once upon a time, in the magical kingdom of Savannah, there was a little girl. A very, very little girl. But wait, she wasn't a girl at all. She was a transvestite. In fact, it's the smallest transvestite in the entire kingdom of Savannah. But this transvestite, this very sweet transvestite, was so sweet. But her evil transvestite stepmom and two evil transvestite stepsisters, they were mean to her. They were so mean. They wouldn't take her to the mall shopping. They wouldn't. We going to the big and tall store. We ain't going to Junior Miss. And even if we did, they don't have elegant ball gowns there. They don't have tiaras. They don't have cha-cha heels. When they left, the little transvestite was crying. She had to make do with the elegant ball gown she could find in the Goodwill dumpster. But she was always waiting for her prince. And when the princes would drive up, all the other transvestites would run up to the car. And she couldn't be seen through the throng of elegant ball gowns. She'd go, pick me, pick me. And she couldn't even be heard through the den of manly falsettos. And even when a prince would come, looking specifically for... Clean set. Uh, transvestite midget mouth love. <laughs> you pull out the tape measure. Four foot nine. That's fine for transvestite jockey mouth love, but midget starts at four foot seven. I could hunk her down. It's just not the same. It's not the same. So she never did find her prince and never did make that $50. And she came home, she was all sad, and her sisters were fighting over this flyer. For the transvestite bull! I want to go! I want to go! Said the little transvestite. Hey, what you going to wear? Your dumpster couture? And how you going to get in? You ain't never met no prince. Ain't never made no $50. You better start scrubbing them floors or we're going to put your shit out on the street. So the little transvestite, she scrubbed and scrubbed while her evil transvestite stepsisters threw chicken bones at her head. <laughs> so they all left for the ball and she was sitting there and she was scrubbing. And she was scrubbing and she looked up through the tower window and there was a star. And she wished on that star! And poof! A little transvestite appeared looking like a cross between Cher and Beth Midler in a cloud of CMC Music Factory. And we're a magic wand and a shovel. Grab my magic shovel and we're going to take you to that ball! 
So she grabbed the magic shovel and they flew off to the magical kingdom of Atlanta. With the magic shovel, they dug up the grave of John Benet Ramsey. A ball gown, said the Willis Transvestite. Just my size. Isn't the wash out the blood stains and rape and cha cha heels? are so tall. And the tiara and the stones on it were so beautiful she could almost pretend they were real. Then the fairy godmother took the skull of Jean Benet Ramsey and waved her magic wand and turned into a magical stretch hummer. And they jumped in and went to the transvestite ball with her beautiful tiara, her statuesque heels, and her elegant ball gown. She had no problem making the $50 entry fee in a magical truck stop men's room. <laughs> so they pulled out on front, and the uh, fairy godmother turned five dirty hobos into weightlifting rent boys. And they grabbed the little transvestite and they threw her into the stage and she started dancing and, and dancing. She thought if she could pretend to sing and dance as good as any of the other transvestites. She got right up to the finals and then she fought the reigning queen of the Savannah transvestites, the Lady Chablis. But there was one thing, one thing the trans little transvestite was not very good at and that was hiding her candy. And while she was singing in the finals, her duct tape slipped. She was so embarrassed. And the lady Shepley just looked at her. She was sensing a quick one. Just looked at her and looked back and looked at her. And the, she was just so embarrassed. Little friends of us, they wanted to die until she had a great idea. And knocked the lady Shepley upside the head with her engorged trouser trout. And then they proclaimed her the winner. They grabbed her a big bag of roses bigger than she was, put them up on her, and got her the title of the littlest queen of the transvestites. And later on that night, she met her prince behind the magical club dumpster and made much more than $50 and lived happily ever after. I'm King Spoet. Good night. King Spoet. I'm still nervous that he's off the stage. Ma'am, you look disturbed. You we know. love him. Let's just leave it at that. You need counseling after that? He's actually staying in my apartment tonight. I'm kind of nervous too. He's got an extra bed. <laughs> He's a good lawyer. You know, I'm going to let him sleep in Stella's room. I'm kind of nervous. In my room? I don't think so. You already told me sheets. You already told me a dream about me. I don't need you to be that close. Hey, once again, coming up, we are honored to have this cat on tonight. Special person.